Hello, uh, today let's talk about centralized and decentralized systems and Web 2.0 versus Web 3.0. Most of us are familiar with centralized and decentralized systems on the personal level. For example, if you want to send a letter to somebody over a mail, you have to write it, address it, put a stamp on it, hand it over to a mail service to have it delivered for you. In this case, a post office is a centralized entity handling your delivery, as well as deliveries of thousands and perhaps millions of people. On the other hand, if you were to talk to your neighbor in your backyard, you do not need any intermediary to deliver your message. This is known as peer-to-peer -peer communication, and this type of communication is at the core of decentralized web. In Web 2.0, we have a client-server architecture. Here, every person, aka client, is carrying their letter to the post office, aka server. This server then processes whatever is in the letter and returns data to the client as per server programming specification. In this centralized fashion, if the server is down, the client cannot get the data they want. If the owners of the server decide to remove certain data, they are free to do so. And server owners can collect information passing through server, and clients cannot influence it in any way. This leads to three issues. 1. Server down issue. 2. Censorship, aka freedom of speech infringement issue. 3. Possible privacy infringement by data collection. Still, there are some good reasons to working with centralized systems. One primary reason is the processing power. When using Web 2.0 systems, such as various cloud services, you can grab yourself a powerful server instance and work with heavy data processing, such as required for an AI training, for example. The Web 3.0 is still in its infancy, although we saw it first sprouting during the days of Napster and BitTorrents. Now with blockchain protocols, it is moving to new heights. Its main benefits are trust the protocol instead of people paradigm, redundant storage, censorship resistance, fast data delivery. The trust is achieved by using blockchain protocol to store consensus verified references to data in redundant storage systems such as IPFS or Rweave. We will talk more about trust and blockchain protocol in the next video. Redundant storage is achieved by using both blockchain and redundant storage systems by copying data and blockchain records to many different computers or nodes connected to each other through a peer-to-peer -peer protocol. Censorship resistance is therefore achieved because if someone wanted to censor something, they would need to remove that information from every single computer on the network. Data has to be erased from every single peer or every peer with a copy of the data has to go offline. This is much harder to do than say for example to simply erase a server instance from AWS. An example would be how Amazon erased the conservative social network Parler in, uh, I believe it was 2020? Hmm, that's interesting, don't you think? Anyway, Web 3.0 uses a lot of decentralization systems that use peer-to-peer -peer communication to arrive at a consensus. Proof-of-work and proof-of-stake consensus mechanisms for blockchain records, decentralized network of computers scattered throughout the world for storing large blobs of data, decentralized databases that use contact-free replicated data types, or CRDTs for short, to maintain data integrity through a peer-to-peer -peer network. And what about security? How do you know that some random person cannot access your private data? Well, if you just store data in raw form, you don't. Everything you upload is accessible to anyone that knows an address of that data. I can already hear you yelling that I'm crazy and asking why would you use a leaky system like that? And I'll answer, because it is secure provided you use encryption techniques. If you want to keep some of the data private and only want to share it with a few people, you can create a public-private key pair, sign data with your private key and give your public key only to people you want to have access to your data. Believe it or not, but I tend to think that storing data in a peer-to-peer -peer network in an encrypted form is more secure than storing your data uh, on the social media platforms. Because data on social media is highly accessible to people and AI algorithms inside such organizations. You never really know how or when some of your data will end up places you did not intend. So yeah, encrypted data is useless unless you have a supercomputer with a couple hundred thousand years of time to brute force the hash. Otherwise, you need a key. However, keep in mind that if your friend gives your public key and data address to someone else, that someone else will still be able to read your posts. And be warned that all encryption in the world cannot save you from malware that might steal your keys if you fail to keep them safe. So, beware. That's it for now, but before we move on, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce you to an NFT project I'm working on. I thought about how to fund this tutorial effort including some of the more in-depth projects involving Solana blockchain. And so I created a Crypto Snow Globes NFT collection. It is a collection of unique digital souvenirs, 
I added a link to the project Discord channel in the description below. Later on, I will also make a tutorial on how to programmatically create NFTs in 3D using Python. So make sure to check it out. And if you like 3D graphics, art, NFTs, and crypto, then join. That's it for now. Like and subscribe. And with that, let's move on. Next up, trust and blockchain protocol.